which we can take to heart through our message. That we might be strengthened in the faith and guided in our wisdom. Help us, Lord, to come before you, to bend our knees to your will, and to declare you king in our lives. For this we pray. Amen. So as I kind of said in the children's sermon, today is Christ the King Sunday. It is the last Sunday of the Christian year, which means that next week we start in the Advent and start the new Christian year. It's a little earlier than uh, our traditional calendar says of January 1st, but uh, God has never conformed to human calendars. So. Uh, part of what I wanted to talk about today, and as far as Christ the King Sunday, is, is a look at, at who is Lord. Who is Christ, our King, who is this person that we are called to follow, and what is it that he asks for us to do? And uh, we looked at the letter from 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter 1, and it's, it's Paul's introduction, and it actually probably was not the first letter he actually wrote to the church of Corinth. It probably was a later one, but we don't have any of his prior uh, correspondence with Corinth. <laughs> But in this letter, Paul is, Paul is trying to reach out to this church that he helped start, this church that he helped to baptize members with. And, and we get a sense from the letter that, that within that church, there's, there's been some turmoil. That some of the members of the church are trying to claim that they have more power or responsibility or that, that they are more Christian than other members because of of who baptized them. Some of them were, were baptized by Paul himself, a very small number, and one that he initially says he really didn't baptize anyone except for two, and then he has to rephrase, well, and, and then there was that family that I also baptized, and, and you know what, there may be some others I just don't remember. Some of them were baptized by Peter, Caiaphas, uh, some of them by one of the other uh, apostles or one of the other preachers, whose name was Apollos. We, uh, we don't know a whole lot about Apollos. He didn't write any other letters or, or leave us any other markers other than when he shows up in, in some of the writings of other Christian authors. And some of them claim that they're just followers of Christ, that, that it's not about who baptized them, that, that they were baptized in the name of Christ, and that's who they owe their, their loyalty to. And, and so Paul is is sitting there writing this letter to try to help this church understand that, that it really doesn't matter which pastor baptized them. That, that they're all really called to be one church, or to be of one mind and one body, one spirit. That, that it doesn't matter the, the very little minute aspects of each particular apostle's teaching. Instead, they need to be focused on the bigger picture of who Christ is and what Christ has called them to do. That Christ cannot be divided. That Christ is not divided. And therefore, his church and his people shouldn't be divided either. And a way that, that we often struggle within the church is, is sometimes we begin to to think that either because of how long we've been there or because of how close we are with the, the current leadership or, or something that somehow we have more right or knowledge or that we are somehow in a better connection with Christ or in greater faith. And we tend to, to make ourselves lords and to rule over our congregation. But that's not what Christ calls us to do. He calls us to follow him and him alone. That it doesn't matter what titles we may hold. And it doesn't matter what denominational moniker may be on our front door. Because let's face it, as a church, the big church, we've uh, been fighting over 
who is right and which theology is right for a long time. But if we all were to listen to Paul's words, we would know that that is not what Christ is calling us to do. That instead, we all should be focused on the things that he actually said. And if you remember, the, the two big ones were to love your Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And the second is like to love your neighbor as yourself. And so if we're going to make Christ Lord in our lives, and we're going to actually celebrate Him and acknowledge that He is King and acknowledge that His Word is law, then should we not be living into Christ's commandments? Do the little nuances of our theology matter compared to love your neighbor and love the Lord your God? Do the titles in front of our names Pastor, lady, or ad board chair, treasurer, finance chair, they really matter in comparison to loving your neighbor. Christ is Lord. As we prepare ourselves to wrap up this year and to enter into the Advent season, it's a great way to refocus our lives. To think about Jesus as King and as Lord. What do, would it look like if we actually began to, to do all of the things that Christ said? If we actually truly began to love our neighbor as ourselves? Do we love the stranger on the street, like we love the members of our family, the parts of ourselves? Do we put God first in our lives? Or do we make excuses for why other things have to take precedence? This Advent, may we take these four weeks as we await the arrival of Christ once again, to prepare our hearts to place Him first and foremost, to prioritize Him and give Him the throne that is rightfully His in our lives. A throne that He already sits on in judgment over all of the kingdoms of the world, over all of creation. Maybe it's time that we act and take that throne and that kingship seriously. Let us take these four weeks that are about to start. Let us look at each part of our life, how, how we can help God be king with our time. How we can help God be king with, with our thoughts and our feelings. How God can be king with our treasures. And how God can be king with us and our bodies. Our whole selves. How we can trust in Him. Place our faith in Him who has been faithful to us. Turn to Him when we are in need and thank Him when we receive His blessings. Christ is our Lord and Savior. To be Lord means that He rules over us. And we often love to let that part go. We, we like the Savior part. We like the idea of eternal life. But, but we like to say that we are masters of our own lives and our own destinies. We like to say that, that everything that we earn is our own. I know this because I just had this conversation with a member of my family this week. And we were talking about how we should give and how we should care for other people. And, 
And this particular member of my family said that every single dollar in my bank account I have earned, it is mine and I get to decide what to do with it. And I had to try to explain to them that, well, no, as a Christian, you should be believing that, that it's all God's, that God blessed you with it and you are a steward of it. And it was an interesting conversation. This particular person in my family is a little bit older than I am and, and tends to, to like to get into arguments with me and tell me that at some point that I'm not supposed to be his pastor. Uh, but <laughs> And then I get in an argument with him and say, well, if you've gone to church in the last six months, I wouldn't need to be. But it was a conversation that reminded me about who is Lord. In this member of my family's life, this particular person still believes they are Lord. Do we do that? Have I myself been guilty of that? I have to admit at times, yes. There are times when when I want to control and, and to know and think I know what's best. And, and in reality, I need to let go. And it was this conversation and, and this scripture reading that reminded me of that, that. That while we may not all agree on the, the, the things like politics and all those kind of things, we do need to agree on who is Lord. And we do need to live as if Jesus Christ is.